In a sudden and unexpected turn of events, the tranquility of the hospital was shattered as a wild wolf forcefully burst through the entrance, its untamed energy reverberating through the long corridors. The mere presence of this fearsome creature instilled a sense of panic and confusion among both the dedicated staff and vulnerable patients. The nurses, caught off guard, swiftly dispersed in search of refuge from the imposing figure that now dominated the scene. Among the fleeing medical professionals was a young and courageous nurse named Emily. Her eyes widened with a mix of awe and trepidation, her hands trembling involuntarily. As Emily observed the wolf's relentless prowling through the hospital, its fierce gaze penetrating through the chaos, she couldn't help but notice something peculiar with it. Contrary to the expected aggression, the wolf carried something delicately in its powerful jaws, an object that seemed out of place amidst the chaos and commotion. This unexpected sight amidst the fear and frenzy sparked a glimmer of curiosity within Emily, urging her to delve deeper into the mystery that unfolded before her very eyes. Everyone at the hospital is in total shock. Most of the staff run away in fear of the wolf. Emily tries calming everyone because she notices that the wolf is carrying something. It looks like a small creature, but it is not a wolf. What could it possibly be? The hospital security immediately starts evacuating the hospital. They can't risk anyone getting hurt by the wolf. Emily tries to stop them, telling them the wolf needs help. However, almost nobody seems to care. Emily decides to take matters into her own hands. This was her one chance to really make a difference. As she attempts to approach the wolf, she finds it darting aimlessly through the corridors of the hospital, completely disoriented and unsure of its destination. The wolf's state of confusion and vulnerability is evident, as it emits distressing sounds that echo through the sterile halls. Undeterred by the potential danger posed by the wolf's predatory instincts, Emily devises a daring plan to confine the creature within a room, with herself as its only companion. Against all odds, Emily executes her plan with remarkable precision, successfully maneuvering the wolf into the designated room and swiftly securing the door behind them. The small creature, now trapped alongside the enigmatic wolf, seems both curious and apprehensive about its newfound company. Emily's audacious move has created a unique and potentially perilous situation, as the predator and prey find themselves confined together within the confines of the room. However, Emily remains undaunted by the inherent risks, driven by a deep sense of compassion and a desire to understand the enigmatic nature of the wolf. She recognizes that this encounter could provide invaluable insights into the behavior and psyche of this majestic creature. However, the wolf's behavior suddenly changes, becoming highly aggressive and trying to attack Emily. Overwhelmed by fear, Emily skillfully keeps a safe distance from the wolf. Luckily, the wolf shows reluctance to stray too far from the creature it is protecting. Emily tries to make herself small to let the wolf know that she is there to help the wolf out. She knows that the wolf desperately needs the help of her or a veterinarian. Emily is in luck, and the wolf seems to calm down. Then Emily decides to seek help from a willing doctor. Emily opens the door and the wolf stays in the room. Emily thinks it finally understands that she is going to get the wolf help. Emily quickly shouts to some doctors that she needs help with the wolf. To her frustration, they all just run away from her. They don't want to get hurt. All the doctors seem very reluctant to help Emily. She pleads with them to just follow her. They tell her that they called animal control to remove the wolf from the hospital. Emily drops to her knees. How can she convince them to help? She finally finds a close friend of hers and a good surgeon who is willing to go with her to see what is going on. He tells Emily to stay in front. He isn't a veterinarian, so he does not have the required skills. But he promises Emily he will do everything he can to help. As they approach the room, they are greeted by the sound of howling. The wolf appears deeply concerned for the safety of the small creature. Urgency fills the air, demanding swift action. However, upon entering the room, the wolf's anxiety resurfaces instantly. There appears to be a profound bond between the creature and the wolf. Emily attempts to approach, only to be met with a menacing display of teeth from the wolf. It becomes clear to Emily that this will not be an easy task. She finds herself at a loss for what to do. When her companion, Mark, makes an attempt, the wolf's displeasure intensifies, accompanied by menacing growls. 
Mark is now too afraid to even consider drawing nearer. The tension in the room is palpable, as the wolf's protective instincts clash with the desire to understand the situation. Emily and Mark exchange worried glances, searching for a solution. They realize that gaining the trust of the wolf is crucial, but it seems like an insurmountable challenge. The small creature, seemingly oblivious to the tension, continues to emit faint cries, further fueling the wolf's unease. Emily's mind races, desperately seeking a way to bridge the gap between them. Emily doesn't give up, and by some miracle, the wolf only lets her get closer to the creature. Emily doesn't know what to do. She has no clue what the creature could be, but it seems very weak. She has to bring it somewhere to a safe and sterile room. Emily musters up the courage to pick up the creature, knowing that the wolf watches her every move. Luckily, when she picks it up, the wolf doesn't resist either. It finally recognizes that Emily is only there to help. However, she still doesn't let Mark come close. Emily is aware that she must reach an operating room, and the wolf is trailing behind her. Emily is uncertain about the course of action she should take. Subsequently, Mark informs her that he is clueless about what steps to take. It becomes evident that they require the expertise of an animal specialist, preferably a veterinarian. Unfortunately, the nearest veterinarian is located quite a distance away. Mark suggests that she contact the veterinarian to inquire if they can provide assistance remotely. Without delay, Emily manages to establish contact with the veterinarian. However, upon explaining the dire situation, the veterinarian responds with immediate silence. Several seconds pass without any form of response, leaving Emily with a strong sense that something is gravely amiss. Emily is aware that she must reach an operating room, and the wolf is trailing behind her. Emily is uncertain about the course of action she should take. Subsequently, Mark informs her that he is clueless about what steps to take. It becomes evident that they require the expertise of an animal specialist, preferably a veterinarian. Unfortunately, the nearest veterinarian is located quite a distance away. Mark suggests that she contact the veterinarian to inquire if they can provide assistance remotely. Without delay, Emily manages to establish contact with the veterinarian. However, upon explaining the dire situation, the veterinarian responds with immediate silence. Several seconds pass without any form of response, leaving Emily with a strong sense that something is gravely amiss. The wolf appears to be taken aback by the sheer multitude of individuals present within the confines of the room. Its demeanor suggests a sense of vulnerability and apprehension. In a swift and instinctive response, Emily promptly positions herself as a protective barrier between the wolf and the visibly tense police officers. Firmly, she instructs them to maintain a safe distance. Unexpectedly, the wolf initiates a peculiar action. It begins to tread purposefully towards the exit, seemingly beckoning Emily to accompany it. Perplexed and devoid of any understanding, Emily finds herself enveloped in an atmosphere charged with urgency, rendering it impossible for her to disregard the wolf's silent plea. A compelling force compels her to heed the wolf's lead, as if an unspoken obligation has been bestowed upon her. Deep within her, Emily harbors a profound sense that there exists a realm of events far beyond the comprehension of those around her. Driven by this intuition, she finds herself compelled to trail the enigmatic wolf as it ventures into the depths of the forest. Realizing the urgency of the situation, Emily hastily retreats indoors to retrieve her phone, intending to summon the aid of a veterinarian. Upon reaching out to the veterinary professional, Emily is informed that he is en route to the hospital, rendering him unable to offer any further assistance. In the event that there is indeed an additional presence lurking within the forest, Emily must confront the daunting reality that she is solely responsible for addressing it. The veterinarian's obligations prevent him from multitasking, as his primary focus lies on attending to the ailing creature. Consequently, Emily finds herself confronted with a pivotal decision that demands her undivided attention. With a hint of hesitation, Emily makes the decision to venture into the thick forest, following the wolf's lead. A sense of unease washes over her as she realizes the potential dangers of being alone in this unfamiliar territory. Although the wolf appears relatively calm, Emily can't shake the feeling that she could use some support. She racks her brain, realizing that there is only one person she can turn to in this moment of uncertainty. 
Without wasting any time, she dials the number of a friendly animal expert from the nearby animal sanctuary, seeking guidance on her chosen path. The expert, concerned for her safety, strongly advises against blindly pursuing the wolf's trail. Emily's confidence wavers as she contemplates the expert's words of caution. In an attempt to ensure her well-being, she decides to share her live location with David, the only person she can rely on. As she locks eyes with the wolf, a mix of determination and apprehension fills her, unsure of what lies ahead. The wolf begins to grow restless, its restlessness palpable in the air. Emily, filled with anticipation, eagerly awaits David's arrival and resolves to venture into the thick forest, guided by the wolf's instinctual knowledge. Uncertain of their destination, Emily senses an inexplicable significance to this journey, as if there is an underlying purpose yet to be revealed. As they delve deeper into the forest's depths, Emily's anxiety intensifies, a gnawing feeling of being under scrutiny enveloping her. However, amidst her unease, she finds solace in the unwavering presence of the wolf, knowing it will protect her should any peril arise. Suddenly a sound reaches her ears, breaking the silence that had enveloped them. Emily began to hear faint noises emanating from a distance, causing her to perk up and listen intently. At first, the sounds resembled cries for help, but as time passed, they grew increasingly feeble. A sense of unease settled within her, as she pondered the potential implications of these diminishing pleas. It became evident that some unfortunate creatures were in dire need of attention, yet the identity of these distressed beings remained a mystery to Emily. Her anxiety heightened, and just as she was on the verge of succumbing to her apprehension, a sudden loud noise shattered the silence. At that moment, Emily's realization dawned upon her. She was being summoned by someone. Hastily, she reached for the phone, only to discover that her signal was alarmingly weak. Despite the frustrating circumstances, she strained to make out the voice of the veterinarian on the other end, who seemed to be struggling to convey an urgent message. Though his words were muffled and indistinct, it seemed as though he was imploring Emily to return without delay. Emily knows it is an urgent call. The wolf is staring at her in desperation. Emily starts to doubt her choices. Should she go towards the noises, or should she decide to back off now? She takes a few steps back, but then she realizes it is already too late. When she starts backing off, the wolf senses her fear and starts growling. She then realizes she has absolutely no choice but to follow the wolf wherever it is leading her. Emily can't believe she is doing this, but there is no going back now. David follows closely behind Emily when he picks up the distress noises as well. He realizes that there is something that urgently needs their attention— the sounds are getting increasingly louder with every step they take toward them. Emily asks David if he recognizes the noises. David tells her that he has never heard anything like these noises before. They both have absolutely no clue what kind of animal it could be. Emily glanced downwards and beckoned David to join her. The interior of the well was engulfed in an impenetrable darkness, rendering their vision useless. Nevertheless, an undeniable certainty gripped them. There was undoubtedly something lurking in the depths below. The faint echoes of distressed animal cries reached their ears, intensifying their urgency to take immediate action. But the question remained, how could they possibly intervene in this dire situation? Contemplating their predicament, Emily and David exchanged concerned glances, their minds racing with potential solutions. With each passing moment, the urgency grew, compelling them to devise a plan swiftly. They knew that time was of the essence, and the lives of these distressed creatures hung in the balance. Driven by a shared determination, Emily and David began to explore their surroundings, searching for any tools or means to aid their rescue mission. Their hands brushed against rough surfaces, feeling their way through the darkness as they scoured the area for anything that could assist them in their noble endeavor. Suddenly, a glimmer of hope emerged as Emily's fingers grazed a sturdy rope hidden amidst the shadows. By a stroke of luck, David had brought some rope with him. He tells Emily that it is strong enough to hold him so he can rappel down. He quickly starts tying the rope to a nearby tree. However, he quickly realizes the rope is too short. David tells Emily that there is only one way to do this. He needs her to hold the rope while he rappels down. Emily is hesitant. This could go very wrong. She feels like she isn't strong enough. 
She needs to tie the rope around her waist. This could seriously hurt her. The wolf grows increasingly restless as time drags on, causing anxiety to consume its being. After what feels like an eternity, Emily succumbs to the pressure and agrees to follow David's proposed course of action. She secures the rope firmly around her waist, ensuring a tight grip on it. However, just as David is about to embark on his descent, a sudden realization dawns upon him. He has overlooked a crucial detail. In the midst of his preparations, he discovers that he is devoid of a flashlight, and to make matters worse, his phone has just breathed its last breath. In a swift and selfless act, Emily promptly hands over her phone to David, enabling him to proceed with his descent. With a deep inhalation, David musters the courage to let himself go, allowing his body to traverse over the precipice, while Emily clings onto the rope with unwavering determination. David descended down the rope, gracefully navigating the descent with expertise. Meanwhile, Emily's heart raced as she watched the rope slip away from David's grasp. Panic surged through her veins, knowing that the rope was not securely fastened around her waist. Suddenly, a piercing scream echoed through the air, causing Emily's heart to skip a beat. She immediately recognized the voice as David's, and her worst fears were confirmed. In a split second, Emily comprehended the gravity of the situation. David had plummeted to the bottom, his fall interrupted only by sheer luck. Miraculously, a wolf had seized the rope with its powerful jaws, preventing David from meeting a tragic fate. This unexpected intervention provided Emily with a glimmer of hope, as she realized she now had the opportunity to secure the rope and ensure David's safe return. With a renewed sense of determination, Emily swiftly took hold of the rope, her hands trembling slightly. She meticulously fastened it around her waist, ensuring that it would not slip away again. As she secured the rope, Emily's mind raced with thoughts of David's well-being and the urgency of the situation. David directed the beam of the flashlight towards the source of the mysterious noises, revealing a multitude of these minuscule creatures. Overwhelmed by what he witnessed, he urgently called out to Emily, eager to share his discovery. At that moment, Emily's eyes widened with realization, understanding that the creature they encountered in the hospital was not an isolated incident. With a sense of urgency, Emily swiftly responded to David's call, her voice echoing through the darkness. She emphasized the importance of rescuing these creatures from the depths of the well, recognizing the pressing need for immediate action. Time was of the essence, and they couldn't afford to waste a single moment. Together, David and Emily brainstormed a plan to extricate the tiny animals from their perilous predicament. They knew that every passing second brought them closer to a critical point, where the creatures' lives would hang in the balance. With unwavering determination, they made a firm resolution to rescue those in need, vowing to take immediate and decisive action. As they pondered their next course of action, a palpable sense of urgency permeated the atmosphere, compelling them to act swiftly. The burden of responsibility weighed heavily upon their shoulders, urging them to proceed with haste. They were acutely aware that time was of the essence, and the narrow window of opportunity was rapidly closing. David, in his quest, realized that he must bring the afflicted creatures to the surface individually, ensuring their safety and well-being. Recognizing their frailty, he resolved to provide them with the necessary support and care. Although David remained uncertain about the nature of their affliction, a hunch told him that the veterinarian might already possess the answers he sought at the hospital. After approximately 15 minutes, David successfully brought all the animals up to the surface. At this point, they found themselves facing a total of five animals. However, a new challenge arose. They needed to safely transport these animals to the hospital. Unfortunately, the animals were too large to be transported all at once, or at least that's what it appeared to be. David and Emily were only capable of carrying two animals each, which meant they still had one animal left to transport. Nevertheless, they soon realized that the wolf could assist in carrying one of the animals as well. With determination, they swiftly picked up the animals and began their journey back, fully aware of the urgency to return promptly. However, in the midst of their efforts, Emily received an unexpected phone call. Emily received a phone call, urgently summoning her to the veterinary hospital. 
The vet informed her that they had successfully identified the animal in question and stressed the importance of her immediate return. In response, Emily informed the vet that they had discovered an additional five animals. A gasp escaped her lips as she heard the vet exclaim, How is that even possible? Troubled by the vet's reaction, Emily shared the news with David. Both of them grew increasingly concerned and quickened their pace. They were acutely aware that time was of the essence, and every minute counted. The animals desperately needed to be taken to the vet for their salvation. Could they have arrived too late already? The weight of uncertainty hung heavy in the air as they hurried towards the hospital, hoping for a positive outcome. Upon their arrival at the hospital, they were promptly instructed to surrender the animals in their care and patiently await in the designated waiting room adjacent to the operating room. It was made abundantly clear that under no circumstances were they permitted to enter the room itself. The veterinarian, in order to ensure undivided attention towards the critical task of saving the animals, required an environment free from distractions. Emily, however, found herself overwhelmed with a sense of anxiety that began to intensify within her. The weight of the situation bore down upon her, causing her heart to race and her palms to grow clammy. Each passing minute felt like an eternity as she anxiously awaited any news or updates on the well-being of the animals. The sterile hospital walls seemed to close in on her, amplifying her unease. She desperately sought solace in the company of her fellow waiting room occupants, hoping to find some semblance of comfort amidst the collective worry that hung heavy in the air. The minutes turned into hours, and the anticipation continued to gnaw at her nerves, leaving her feeling increasingly restless. The group began to ponder the identity of these mysterious creatures. Although not wolves themselves, there was undoubtedly a strong connection between them and the wolf species. The wolf had been granted access to the operating room due to their inability to restrain it any longer. As time passed, they were met with an unexpected occurrence. A resounding, piercing howl echoed through the air, reaching their ears. The sound reverberated, causing a mix of curiosity and unease to settle among the group. They exchanged glances, their eyes filled with a blend of fascination and trepidation. The haunting sound reverberated through the corridors, originating from the sacred realm of the operating room. With a swift motion, the veterinarian swung open the door, granting them passage into the enigmatic chamber. A sense of urgency filled the air as the vet assured them that their arrival was fortuitous, for they had successfully rescued the imperiled creatures. A wave of relief washed over Emily, soothing her anxious heart. Yet her inquisitive nature remained unsatisfied, yearning for answers to the mysteries that lingered within those walls. The room seemed to hold secrets, whispering tales of triumph and resilience, begging to be unraveled. Emily's eyes darted around, absorbing the scene before her, as her mind danced with a myriad of questions, eager to delve deeper into the enigma that had unfolded before her very eyes. The vet, sensing her curiosity, offered a knowing smile hinting at the extraordinary tales that awaited her eager ears. With a newfound sense of wonder, Emily prepared herself for the journey that lay ahead, ready to uncover the hidden truths that resided within the realm of the operating room. Emily rushes towards the wolf, noticing its surprisingly serene demeanor. The other animals, too, have ceased their clamor, and seem to have drifted into a peaceful slumber. The veterinarian, understanding the need for their recovery, informs Emily that it may take some time for them to regain their vitality. Summoning her bravery, Emily embraces the wolf, who, sensing her genuine intentions, allows the affectionate gesture. The wolf recognizes that Emily's actions have been instrumental in navigating this challenging predicament. With the wolf now comforted, Emily turns her attention to the vet, seeking a comprehensive explanation for the unfolding events. She yearns to understand the circumstances that led to this peculiar situation and seeks clarity from a knowledgeable professional. In a surprising turn of events, the veterinarian begins by humbly admitting his mistake to Emily and David. With a heavy heart, he acknowledges that he was utterly wrong in requesting Emily's return. Deep down, he realizes that his decision was driven by fear, fearing the unknown and the potential consequences that could arise. However, as the conversation unfolds, the vet reveals an astonishing revelation to the bewildered duo. 
He excitedly shares that amidst his apprehension, he managed to rescue a collection of extraordinary animals, unlike any he had ever encountered before. These magnificent creatures, previously unseen by his eyes, captivated his imagination and filled him with awe. These animals are a unique hybrid of a wild dog and a wolf. The circumstances surrounding their presence inside the well remain a mystery to him, but one thing is certain. These adorable pups are exceptionally rare. He is aware of the existence of a black market that thrives on trading such extraordinary creatures. On the other hand, she vehemently opposes the idea of releasing them back into the wild. Both of them agree that these precious beings require a secure sanctuary, a place where they can thrive without any threats or dangers lurking around. They ponder over the options, considering various possibilities to ensure the safety and well-being of these extraordinary crossbreeds. Perhaps a specialized wildlife conservation center could provide the necessary care and protection they need. Alternatively, they contemplate reaching out to reputable animal sanctuaries that specialize in sheltering and rehabilitating unique and endangered species. The search for a suitable haven for these remarkable animals intensifies as they understand the importance of finding a place where they can live out their lives in peace and harmony. They are determined to spare no effort in securing a future for these extraordinary beings where they can be cherished and protected from the perils of the outside world. He advises them that it would be most beneficial for both the puppies and the wolf to be relocated to a secure environment, not a conventional zoo, but rather an animal sanctuary. Fortunately, David happens to be employed by the nearby animal sanctuary, and they currently possess ample space to accommodate these creatures. In this sanctuary, the pups and the wolf can be closely monitored and cared for, ensuring their well-being and safety. The sanctuary offers a haven where these animals can thrive, free from the constraints and limitations of a zoo. David's affiliation with the sanctuary presents a serendipitous opportunity to provide the pups and the wolf with a nurturing and protected habitat. The sanctuary's commitment to animal welfare aligns perfectly with the needs of these vulnerable creatures, making it an ideal destination for their relocation. With David's involvement, the transition to the sanctuary can be seamlessly facilitated, ensuring a smooth and secure transfer for the pups and the wolf. David is filled with concern for the wolf and the potential consequences of separating her from her precious pups. Yet to his surprise, the wolf appears content and willing to accompany her offspring to the animal sanctuary, where they receive proper care and attention. This alleviates one of David's worries, granting him a sense of relief. Over time, Emily forms a regular routine of visiting the wolf, and surprisingly, the wolf pups also start to acknowledge and recognize her, as well as David. They shower her with an overwhelming amount of love and affection, filling her heart with warmth. Emily discovers immense happiness in the brave decision she made on that fateful day, summoning the courage to face her fears and venture into the forest to save these majestic beings. This choice has proven to be incredibly gratifying and satisfying for her, bringing her a sense of fulfillment beyond measure. With each passing day, Emily's bond with the wolf and its pups grows stronger, deepening their connection and creating a beautiful friendship that transcends words. The forest becomes a sanctuary for Emily, a place where she finds solace and a renewed sense of purpose. The once daunting and mysterious woods now hold a special place in her heart, a testament to the transformative power of compassion and bravery. Emily's story inspires others, spreading a message of love and understanding, reminding us all of the incredible impact one person can have on the lives of others, both human and animal alike.